Okay, so now that we've accepted that side quest, I want to go ahead and show off where that merchant guy is because, uh, especially if you, you're going to need to know where he is, especially if uh, you haven't been stocking up on non-lethal stuff for this this side quest because uh, you're definitely going to need it. So he is actually right over here by that locker we opened earlier in the game. And like I said, I've heard from uh, from some people that uh, he does exist in the first version of Hangsha, but I haven't been able to find him exactly. So uh, this is where he is in the second version. And he has gas grenades for sale. We're definitely going to want to pick that one up. And uh, he also has all the non-lethal weapons available, including the peps, which uh, I might... Eh. If I had the inventory space, I would totally buy the peps and show it off now because I realize I still haven't gotten a chance to actually demonstrate what it does. But um, there's not very many of them in the game either, even though the ammo is decently plentiful enough to where you'll never really run out. Um, if you're doing a non-lethal run, though, the peps is usually not going to be the weapon you're going to use oh, amongst the other the three weapons that you can use. But uh, like I said, it has its uses. It's worth carrying around because you really don't need that much inventory space for a uh, non-lethal run. So I went ahead and bought the uh, target seeking system, which is for either the assault rifle or the uh, um, SMG, and they are or the combat rifle and machine pistol, rather, as they're called in this game. And uh, it's a bit of an obscene ability, honestly. It means that the um, they will home in in midair, sort of like the homing rockets from any id software game you've ever played. I'm going to go ahead and sell my uh, excess ammo for weapons I'm not carrying, like the heavy rifle and the trank rifle. And um, just have another look real quick. Yeah, that's everything. But yeah, it's it's a bit, like I said, it's a bit of, a, of an obscene ability. Because like I said, it... Um, it homes in on targets and you don't have to aim at all. It's really unnecessary, especially because it takes they don't it doesn't auto auto send it doesn't auto target their head, so it's a bit of a waste of ammo, but you're guaranteed to hit them. So if you have the ammo to spare, it's really good. It's really good against bosses if you feel like using the combat rifle against a boss. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that second side quest we accepted first. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over here. I'm doing this in the non-linear manner I did in uh, in Detroit as well for the first visit. I'm going to go over here to the place we're supposed to go for the first side quest. So we can uh, get this uh, pocket secretary that has uh, the whereabouts of Zelazny because he's not, uh, he's not he's definitely not here anymore. I guess that was one of his guys there that uh, got killed. But as far as the actual, the, coincidentally, the, there's a very good reason why I wanted to accept both of these side quests at once. That's because the actual uh, objectives we need. Oh crap! More bell tower guys. Let's run. The actual um, objectives are pretty much in both the same same exact place. So if I can do them both at once, and it really helps my OCD nonlinear way of doing these side quests. Uh, I think I missed the turn, didn't I? Yep, I did. But like I said, the uh, the target seeking system, like I said, it's it's not really necessary. I'll never really be using it. But like I said, it is pretty good against bosses because you don't really have to aim at all. It doesn't like cheaply go all the way around corners. It's not like the uh, the hive hand from Half Life, but it's similar. So um, here we are at the little trench over here. Like we uh, we were this is by the Alice Garden Pods, and there's the guys we need to knock out. So. Priority is gas grenades, and uh, for some reason, sometimes when the game is loading like that, it takes a while for your setup to change. But that's never really been a gameplay issue. I've never really uh, felt like that was a bad thing. So you uh, you don't really have to worry about not aler alerting these guys. You just can't kill them. And the problem is they have unsilenced uh, machine pistols, and when they're going to be shooting at you, uh, it's going to attract a lot of attention to you. So I want to get them, as many of them clustered together as possible. I think I've got three guys clustered together right there. And just throw g gas grenades at the clusters of them. So uh, you, that can take some patience to wait for them to get clustered up together. But I figured I haven't been using my gas grenades at all in this game, so I might as well go ahead and use them now. Go ahead and kill that bell tower guy right there because I really don't even care. And uh, his death is not uh, harmful to this side quest at all because he's not part of this gang down here, so he's dispensable. But um, he's the only bell tower guy that should be standing in your way as well. Another thing you could do is Icarus your way down there and use the stun attack from the Icarus to knock out a few of them. But if you don't get a good majority of them clustered together, then you're going to end up being right in the middle of enemy fire out in the open if you do that. So uh, I wanted to do that at some point, but it's very hard to pull off. But it's still another way of disabling them non-lethally using a takedown and um, without you know killing them. 
So I have some, con con some concussion grenades as well, which I haven't been using all that much. Because uh, they don't actually harm the enemy at all, they just obscure their vision and make it to where we can ambush them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. I have, um, go ahead and use a regular takedown on this guy. Jensen's such a badass. Then we're going to retreat to let my uh, battery recharge because I don't want to use a, a cyber boost item. I don't think I even have any left. I need to stock up on some before I leave this area. Go ahead and just use the last gas grenade because I'm never going to be using them again for the rest of the game. And there we go. That's all of them. Then we can go ahead and loot them if we want. They don't, they don't really have that many good, thing, good things to loot except for machine pistols if you're into that sort of thing. But, um... Yeah, this is the only side quest where we are required to be non-lethal, so it's good practice, I suppose. So it's I like that the game um, mixes it up like that and says, oh, this side quest, yeah, you have to be non-lethal, so it gives you the ability to adjust your setup appropriately for it and buy those non-lethal weapons if you haven't been using them throughout the game. So it's, it, it accommodates for the, uh, the fact that it might be a jarring change in your gameplay style. So anyway, we recovered the chip, and uh, Zelazny's location happens to be right over here in this exact same place, in the sewers at this very entrance right here. So we're gonna go ahead and go straight into the next side quest objective because he's right around the corner here. Now to get the achievement for this side quest you have to You're hear him out and let him go and uh, yeah, instead of fighting him. I'm pretty sure you can. There's, there is an option to fight him and kill him but I haven't really done that before because I really like his character and I really like this dialogue so I'm gonna stay quiet for it and let you guys listen. Yeah, it seems no matter how many of their friends I send back in body bags, they just don't get the message. For the sin of their mouths, the words of their lips, let them be trapped in their pride. You've dropped the Merc gig to become a man of the cloth? Hardly. I just have an interest in theology. And I love quoting the book. Everything in it is so evocative. Now, tell me, are you here to stop me? Not exactly. I'm here on behalf of someone who wants you to understand reason. Let me guess. Dr. Wing, right? He's a good man. And I know he's only trying to do what he thinks is right. But he doesn't quite grasp the whole picture here. Then why don't you enlighten me? Start by explaining why you went rogue. When an average man decides he no longer shares his employer's views and opts to leave, we say he's handing in his resignation. When men like us do the same, it's called going rogue. You can't quit a job like ours, Jensen. You know that. Yeah, okay, I can relate. But you still haven't answered my question. And what do you mean when you say you no longer share your employer's view? Back in the US, when I first got into the army, I did it because I wanted to serve my country. I believed in its values. I believed in its government. Back then, I believed that by serving my government, I was serving the people it was supposed to protect. Nice sentiment. But you don't work for the U.S. anymore. You work for Bell Tower. Times change, Jensen. You know the story. Capitalism's final encroachment on one of the most lucrative industries in the history of mankind. War got privatized. The U.S. military offloaded its special operations to PMCs like Blue Water Global and Bell Tower. I believe that as long as they were working for the government, they were serving the same cause. So when they offered me the chance to work on major operations at twice the pay grade, I made my jump. Why don't we just skip to when things went sour? Bell Tower outfitted us with top-notch augmentations. The kind of stuff civilians never hear about. Gave us a massive edge over the enemy. Later, seeing as my unit was one of the most successful ones, they selected us for a special program. Top secret. Experimental tech. Told us we would get to work on critical black ops for the U.S. government. But there was a price to pay. Go on. We had to be implanted with a neural hub that manipulates memory centers in the brain. Basically controlling what you can and cannot remember. And you agreed to this? Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. The augmentation was supposed to keep us safe, make sure we'd never remember details if we fell behind enemy lines. That was the main function. The second one, the one they didn't tell us about, was to lower our inhibitions. Make us more receptive to orders we'd likely disobey. Bell Tower turned us into the perfect mercs. 
If you were so perfect, and the hub made you so perfect, how did it fail? How come they didn't outfit the whole agency? I told you the tech was experimental. After a couple of ops, I started experiencing memory shifts, remembering bits and fragments of past operations. Slowly, I realized some of these operations couldn't logically have been orchestrated by the government. I was asked to do highly questionable things, even by professional standards. Aren't we all? Not like this, Jensen. Our services have been sold to corrupt officials in the American and Chinese governments. A combination of lies and use of the neural og made sure we complied. We were working for a shadow government. Individuals corrupted by a quest for personal power. So how'd you get out of it? I confronted the project director. He quoted Apocalypse Now. You have to have men who are moral, and at the same time who are able to utilize their primordial instincts to kill without feeling. I forced him to disconnect the hub, for me and my squad mates here. And then I killed him. I went through his files and contacts. I know who these corrupt men are now. They've turned us into killing machines, and now they'll get to experience their experiment firsthand. Dr. Wing said our situations would resonate. I don't think he realized it might go both ways. Some men deserve the justice we bring on them. Do what you have to do, Zelazny. I won't get in your way. I appreciate that, Jensen. I didn't want you to die for a cause that isn't yours. These men I killed, and these men I'm going to kill. They have names, families, they're people. Their deaths shouldn't be erased from my memory by some electronic software. They should haunt me, taunt me, until I finally meet our Lord and pay for my sins. But the men behind this, they deserve to die. And I think there's poetry in the fact that they engineered their own demise. So there we go. That's that's pretty much the end of that side quest. Like I said, you had to hear him out and empathize with him and uh, let him go uh, in order to get the achievement. But let's go ahead and turn that one in right now. We're going to turn in the uh, the first one we did secondly. But uh, that I love that side quest. It might it might be short. We just you know go and talk to him and then leave and that's it. And so it might be a short side quest, but. I love that dialogue. I just, that that again perfectly sums up what I like about the choices in this game is the fact that they are all right in some way, and it's just up to you to determine uh, which one you like to make um, based on your own personal preference of what you think is right or wrong. I mean, there's no like moral alignment there that says this is the obviously correct thing for you to do, and this is the obviously incorrect thing for you to do, and you would only want to do this because it's evil and it's fun. So. Um, yeah, very interesting. I really like that character, and there is a bonus to uh, letting him go too. So, um, and I can imagine if you chose to fight him, then uh, it would have been very tough to beat because he, uh, as you can see, is heavily augmented and has a heavy rifle. So uh, he might have been pretty tough to take down too if we decided to fight him. But uh, he gives us a little reward for uh, letting him go. He um, uh, contacts some of his old buddies at Bell Tower and has them uh, move location so there's not as many of them around anymore so that's really nice so we don't have as many in a, to worry about resistance on our way back so now we're back we're gonna go ahead and turn in the side quest real quick and uh he'll probably be disappointed to hear how he performed but um you have we still get a minor reward for it cannot stress so um not a, not a big reward but i mean it's a pretty small side quest too so i think we might get a better reward if we uh if we, been able to make him uh, I'm not sure if you can you convince him something? to reason or not. If you, if the only other way to go is to kill him, story, but um, and his men. I'll have to look into that source. at some point. And after talking to him, I decided to let him go. What? But he is a dangerous man, Mr. Jensen. You should not have done this. The men Zelazny's after are far more dangerous than he is. His methods are extreme, but I think his cause is justified. To be honest, Doc, I believe what he wants isn't that different from you. An honorable government free of corruption. They could use a man like you. I... I had not foreseen such a thing. I don't know, Mr. Jensen. You seem to believe that the end justifies the means. But I don't know. I'll have to think about this. Here is a praxis kit. It's all I have. That's good enough, seeing as how we couldn't afford the other one. 
Not really sure what I want to invest in at this point. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and get the Typhoon. So we'll finally get to demonstrate that by the end of the game. So let's go turn into other side quests now that we're done with all that.